My name is Nathan Smith. I'm the prosecuting attorney in Denton County and the president of the Arkansas Prosecuting Attorneys Association. Uh, we are neutral on the originally filed uh, Senate Bill 24. I uh, speak today to oppose uh, this amendment. Uh, first, uh, I would say that as it relates to this amendment, uh, we supported uh, the inclusion of the lawfully present language in the initial bill uh, because we believe uh, stands your ground if it's passed. Uh, should only benefit law-abiding Arkansans. Uh, it's not complicated to obey the law. It's not uh, too much for citizens to expect that before someone engages in violent conduct, they're, they're obeying all the laws uh, that you've passed. And so lawfully present does that. Now, I've heard it said today that one of the goals here is to bring clarity. Uh, I think that this amendment that Representative Pilkington uh, proposed today will be the opposite of that. Uh, and it seems to be undermining the restrictions that the legislature has placed on prohibited places. So I would argue this, if in fact that is the goal, uh, we're going to have two problems. One is going to be we're going to have conflicting laws where we're going to have uh, this particular law that would potentially give some sort of a loophole there, not having to abide by those restrictions. But the other thing I would say, if there is a real need to address uh, prohibited place restrictions in the state of Arkansas, the legislature is free to do that. I, I would just encourage uh, you to file a bill on those specific restrictions, have that debate. Don't use this uh, bill as a vehicle to do that. So I think the passage of this amendment, if it did pass, will result in confusion over how the law is applied statewide. It will in inevitably have disparate treatment across the state. Case. This is going to depend on how prosecutors uh, interpret the law. And so again, uh, we're opposed to this. We think the wording is vague and the, the problems with serious felonies have already, have already been raised. And so I think if the goal is to create clarity, uh, this amendment will gut the ability to do that. Uh, and again, one of the things that I do want to point out, I think it's important to be said today as it relates to, well, what do you do if, right? What if you find yourself in one of these gray areas? Arkansas already has a, a jury instruction, the choice of evils, right? So if a person is ever in a situation uh, where they feel like uh, they're in one of those gray areas, they always can argue uh, before a jury, listen, my choice was die or break the law. And again, uh, the, the point of uh, the amendment is not whether or not you can defend yourself. You can always defend yourself in the state of Arkansas. The point is, do you have to follow the law in order to do that? So for those reasons, we're opposed uh, to this amendment, and I'll be happy to take questions if you have. Representative Richmond, you're recognized for a question. Thank you, Madam Chair, over here on this side. Yes, sir. Appreciate your comments, but uh, I'm a little confused here. I haven't had all that extra book learning that, uh, that the lawyers did in the law school and everything, so we probably need to break this down a little more. The confusion that putting a definition on the, on the word lawful, actually defining that word, the confusion that that's going to cause to the general public, I don't get that. Because the word law, to just any Arkansan out there, can mean a lot of different things. An attempt to actually define it would seem to be an effort to be able to bring more clarity to those people who may be just engineers and accountants and not people that are accustomed to the different type of language that is used in our laws and things. And so could you please clarify just a little bit more how including a definition of the term lawful is actually going to create more confusion instead of less? Sure. Well, I think it's, it's in how it's defined. As a prosecutor, I know what lawfully present means, right? It means you're not breaking the law. You're not present in a way that would be unlawful. You're not committing a violation of the Arkansas Criminal Code. I think as it's defined here, the problem is that you, and it's already been, been raised, you list certain crimes, right, that you call serious felonies. Also, we have enumerated violent felonies and things like that, but serious felonies here uh, seems to be a little, bit, a little bit vague. But the problem is if you list certain ones, are others excluded from the list? So that's in the way I think it makes it uh, less clear. I think law, if you say lawfully present is the original amendment, I think every prosecutor knows how to interpret that. Um, and every Arkansan uh, would, would have the same obligation to understand uh, obeying the law is lawfully present as any other law that you pass. But when you only list certain crimes and not others, there's an implicit confusion there over uh, are only some crimes prohibited and not others, and why would that be? So that's follow, the issue. Follow up, Madam Chair? You're recognized for a follow up. 
So, but just using the word lawful excludes all of the different crimes, serious felonies and whatever else, that when you just use the word lawful, you're not including any of those uh, in there. Why is it that people would be less confused by not having some idea about if you are doing this or if you're doing that or if you're present in this particular place? We're talking about average people, not the prosecuting attorneys. And the whole purpose of this bill and this amendment is to give them a better understanding and also to be able to go into a courtroom when they've had to make a quick decision that usually happens within seconds and they don't have the benefit of a prosecuting attorney's 2020 hindsight that gets to analyze that decision over days, weeks, sometimes months, maybe even years. So please clarify that how having no words is more clear to the Arkansas public. I understand you guys understand it, but I represent more than just you guys. Exactly. Well, again, I think that, that what is in the definition is key, right? So what's in the definition, you, you've listed here, or at least the, the amendment has listed, um, let's see if I get this right. Um, I lost my play. Arson, theft, burglary, murder, rape, or other serious felonies. So the problem is in the definition. So by, by saying that these are the crimes um, that don't allow you to be lawfully present, are you then excluding other crimes? Are you, for example, excluding aggravated assault, terrorist threatening, any any other number of crimes? And so I don't think by saying uh, an Arkansan needs to be lawfully present in order to benefit from the same ground law. We're really asking that that much in terms of understanding. I think it's it's more of an issue to expect them to be able to distinguish between uh, these certain crimes and any other crime that's already on the book. So, for example, a person would look at that and say, "Well, hey, you didn't include aggravated assault. It is 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 that to be excluded from the list?" So that's what I mean by that. I think that's how it creates less clarity. All right. Thank you, sir. Representative.